Welcome back to the last full example video from chapter 11, although this is not the last video for the week. All right, so this example is a block that in the slide we have a full picture for. It is being tethered down with a rope that has a tension in it that we're given of 20 newtons. So we're trying to figure out basically what this block is made out of. And we are in a jar of water. So most of this comes from the slide picture that's provided in the posted PDF, um, but I'm recreating it here. And we're told that this block is five kilograms of mass. All right, now if we think about this situation, even before we start to go through the number crunching, we definitely want to think about what intuition we have for the situation. The density of water, which we will be using in this equation, uh, in this problem, is 1,000 kilograms per cubic meter. If this block has to be held down with a rope, what must be true about the density that we will eventually calculate? Does it have to be larger or smaller than that of water? Hopefully you took a moment to think about it. It definitely is going to have to be a smaller density because it is trying to rise to the surface rather than sink. So let's think about what the free body diagram of the block is going to look like. So we have the block is being held down with a tension and that tension, we're told, is 20 newtons. We also have gravity, because gravity is always around. Mg, and we're told that it's a 5 kilogram block, so 5 times 9.8 is 49 newtons. And then we have the buoyant force from the water acting on the block. So this block is being held in place. The net forces are all equal to zero, because we're not accelerating. We have the buoyant force minus tension minus gravity is equal to zero. So let's plug in what we have so far. The buoyant force equation, I'm just going to write it off to the side so that it's here for our reference. The density of the fluid that we're in times the volume displaced times the little g here. So this buoyant force is going to be the density of water times the volume of the block times 9.8 minus tension, which is 20, minus the force of gravity, which is 49. All right, so the density of water we can calculate. So what we're going to do is we're going to get the um, volume of the block to be the only unknown. So we have... 1,000 times that volume times 9.8 minus 69 newtons equals zero. And so the volume, if we add that to both sides and then divide by 9,800, the volume of the block, which we weren't told, is 69 divided by 9,800, and that's zero point zero zero seven oh four very small volume and just like with every other example although it's not usually the last step the definition of density being mass over volume is used here the density of this block which is what we're trying to calculate is equal to the mass of the block which is five kilograms divided by the volume of the block, which is 0 0.00704 meters cubed. And remember, even before we plug anything in, we are expecting our result to be less than 1,000. And we end up with 710 kilograms per cubic meter, which is exactly in the realm of reasonable. It's less than the density of water, this is a solid block, so we're not expecting numbers that should look like air or helium. And we realize that the process that we went through is the same as all of the other examples. 
We still had to use density as mass over volume for each of the objects, in this case only the block. It just happened to be at the very end of the problem instead of near the beginning, and density was the unknown this time instead of mass or volume being the unknown. But otherwise, the steps that we went through, we draw a picture, we draw a free body diagram, we write down F net equals zero and the forces that go into it, we plug in the buoyant force equation, we use this whenever we need to, and we solve for the thing we're looking for. Sometimes this starred density equals mass over volume comes in before we solving for other things. In this case, it's at the end. But the steps we're taking really are the same for every single buoyant force example from chapter 11. And you should be applying those same steps for the problems that you'll see in the problem set um, for the chapter. That's it for example problem videos for chapter 11. We have more example or we have more lecture video after this um, with some really cool ideas from chapter 12 briefly, concepts rather than additional problem solving, um, and some some pretty exciting demonstrations that we've got videos of. So I will see you in those lecture videos. Thanks for listening.